Morpheus, please, just calm down. I am calm! Morpheus. Morpheus. Orpheus. McDorpheus. Morpheus. Dorpheus. Morpheus. Go eat some walruses. I better stop making fun of his name or else he's gonna show up at my door. Sea sails by the sea, so Orpheus. Today we're going to have fun with the Short King. Short King? <laughs> really? Morpheus? Yes, really, Morpheus, because throughout this whole adventure, I've been learning a little bit about each of the brothers, but I, I don't know anything about Morpheus, except that he likes legs. The man who wants to turn you into a doll? I think I'd make a pretty good doll. The man you're pretty sure... <laughs> the man you're pretty sure hasn't blinked once since you got here? Sounds like my kind of dude. The man who looks like a creepy Victorian doll? Hey, I like creepy Victorian dolls. I like dolls. Dolls do not scare me. Aside maybe from being turned into one, but dolls... Dolls do not scare me. He's the one you're going with? I think we could be friends. Why are you judging me? Me? <laughs> well, if that's what you want, then, all right. It's your funeral. <laughs> uh, uh, why? Why are you being so harsh? He can't be that bad. You walk to where his room is, stopping in front of his blue bedroom door. You knock on the door. You instantly regret it. No reply. You knock on the door again. Still nothing. He's, he's probably sleeping, actually. Is he not in his room? You were sure you saw him enter it a while ago. Maybe he was sleeping. Doesn't seem too far-fetched since he does seem pretty lazy. And because of his namesake. And hey, sleeping is great. Morpheus knows knows where it's at. He knows what to do. But if he's sleeping, he would be angry if you woke him up. He did throw a book at Eros for that, and getting your face smashed in doesn't sound pleasant. But if he's sleeping, when will he wake up? For all you know, he might sleep all through the night, or worse, the whole week. You can't take that risk, not when your life is on the line. You're about to knock again, when suddenly... Uh, why do I have the feeling I should have my hand on the save button? The door opens on its own, making a loud creaking sound. The inside of the room is inky black, with any light that goes near it absorbed by the darkness. You couldn't see a thing. <laughs> oh, I hate this. I really hate this. You desperately did not want to go in there, but you had no choice. You anxiously step into the dark room, hoping that you won't find death waiting for you. You didn't think it was possible, but somehow the room became even darker once you entered. You frantically search the wall next to you, hoping to find a light switch. The mansion does run on electricity, which was surprising to you considering how old it looks. After a few moments, you finally felt a light switch. You quickly turn it on. Holy cannoli, more babies! Well, yeah, I guess there would be a bunch of dolls. Huh, this actually looks kind of cute. I must name the babies. I haven't met most of these babies. I have not met this baby. I know of this baby, but I have not met them yet. I don't think I know this baby. Is that uh, Seth from Colored Gaze? I don't think I've met this baby, but they are very cool looking. This is another adorable looking baby. I can't remember his name. Editor me. Put up the, the game that I think he is from. I have not met this baby, but I know of them. This is a cool baby. I have not met this baby. I think this baby is from the Art Without Blood games that I still need to play. And they're Sean. Sean. And Lilith. Oh, creature Lilith. <gasps> My other son. He looks so precious! Ah, Vincent from Picture Perfect Boyfriend. And John Doe, he looks so cute! Oh, there's more babies on the bed. <gasps> oh, the baby from my ange and Zacharias. And I don't think I know this baby, but he's very cute. 
It looks like something like a prince would have for a bedroom. The shelves are filled with small, cute plush toys. You feel like you've seen them somewhere before, but you can't quite put your finger on it. Everything looks perfectly normal. That is, until you looked over to your right. I just got a nostalgia chill. Over in the far right side of the room are life-size dolls. They were creepy, and yet beautiful. Their skin is smooth and flawless, not a blemish in sight. Each of them were wearing different outfits. Some were dressed up like royalty, some were dressed up like storybook characters. And some of them had their body parts replaced with random household objects. One doll had a TV for a head. Very cool. Very cool, but ah. Oh. Like, oh, what an adorable. Oh, wait, she's a doll. There was one doll that caught your attention. It resembled a young girl with long purple orchid hair. Her skin is white as snow, and her dress is blood red. Her eyes were closed, and she had a small smile spread across her face. You had to admit, Morpheus did an excellent job. Sure do her her father isn't around anywhere. These dolls look so real. You better not move. Don't you move. <coughs> Ma'am? Maybe a little too real. These dolls, are they actually... <laughs> what are you doing in here? Ah! Short King! Instantaneously, you turn around to see Morpheus standing before you, arms crossed. He's giving you his iconic frown, and you can tell by the sound of his voice that he is displeased to see you. He glares hard at you as if he was trying to burn a hole through your head from his stare alone. I asked you a question, human. Are you going to answer me, or are you going to continue gawking at me like an idiot? You glare daggers back at him. This little a-hole. You said my butt was flat last time. You badly wanted to cuss at him, but you need to be in this guy's good graces, or else he will never help you out. You take a deep breath and slowly exhale, in an attempt to calm yourself. Morpheus continues to stare you down. You need to come up with something to say, and fast. Should you come up with an excuse, or should you be honest with him? Well, I am an honest person, and... Even if Mammon's the only one who can read my mind, I should be honest. I need your help, Short King. They always say that honesty is the best policy, right? Maybe he'll be more willing to help you if you come clean. Okay, the truth is, I was looking for you. Morpheus raises an eyebrow. Me? What for? Um, well... Your throat tightens as your mouth goes dry. You can feel knots form in your stomach. Well... Don't just stand there like a doe in headlights. Out with it already. I have more important things to do. Like what, napping? <laughs> I really need an extra hand with the chores. Hubris put way too much for one person to handle, and I would really appreciate it. Hmm. Morpheus is silent for a few moments. The room was so quiet you could hear a pin drop. So, why did you come to me? Well, it was either you or Ares, and I flipped a coin. <laughs> eh? Why not ask Ares or Beelzebub? They would be more useful to you. Besides, I don't have time for things like cleaning. I have more urgent matters on my hands. My precious Elizabeth doll is missing, and I can't find her anywhere. Morpheus looks really upset about losing his doll. And maybe it was just the trick of the light, but you could have sworn you saw tiny tears in his eyes. Oh, I will help you, Short King. It made you feel a little bad for him. Just a little bit. Wait, this is perfect. You can use this to your advantage. If you can find his doll, maybe he'll agree to help you with the chores. Maybe I can help you look for it. I'm a pretty good finder. I used to be a detective when I was a kid, solving mysteries like missing lunch money and finding lost pets. There's a twinkle of interest in Morpheus's eye when you mention the word detective. Really now? 
How about we make a deal? I find your Elizabeth doll, and you help me with the chores afterwards. Deal? Morpheus lets out a loud groan as he rolls his eyes. Ah, fine. But only because I'm desperate. If you don't find my doll before the end of the night, I'll bite you. What are you gonna do, bite my knees? You gulped as you placed a hand around your neck. Why do you always get yourself into trouble? You really hope you find that doll of his soon and fast. Y yeah sure. Sure. No problem. You laugh nervously as you scratch the back of your head. Morpheus's wide stare was not helping you feel calmer. If anything, it was making you feel worse. Okay, so, uh, any idea where you last seen your doll? It was right over there, top shelf. Morpheus points over to a random shelf that is filled to the brim with dolls. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I guess it would be right here. Let's look at the babies. A very angry-looking doll. Still very cute, though. You like his punk attire. A pretty blue-haired doll with long pointy ears. He has very pretty yellow eyes. A white-haired doll with two different colored eyes. One pink and one black. It is a very strange but pretty-looking doll. A cute-looking doll with bright cyan eyes. Its arms are covered in green leaves. Ooh! A fancy-looking doll with teal-green and charcoal-gray dreadlocks. You like his gloves. A cool-looking doll with long carrot-orange hair. You really like his shoes. Ooh. A doll with pale white skin. It has one black eye and one red eye, and is wearing a muzzle. Oh. A doll with long black dreadlocks, stylized in a side ponytail. The ends of the tips are teal blue. L Lilith! Why does Morpheus have a doll that looks like Lilith? Best not to question it. I have a feeling that she put it there. Vincent! A doll wearing a fancy blue tuxedo. He looks like a polite gentleman. Oh. A doll with messy black hair and an eerie smile. Oh, can- Mor Morpheus, Morpheus, can I have- can I have this one? A doll with green eyes and small round glasses. It is dressed up like a librarian. Oh. Zicky Poo! A doll with golden yellow eyes. It is wearing a white suit and has dark purple hair with a long white hairlock sticking out of the top. A creepy-looking doll with big, wide black eyes. Its skin is pale purple and has dark grayish-blue hair. Where's his doll? A doll wearing a white dress shirt and a low v-neck with brown Victorian trousers. His face and chest are covered with stitches. Hmm. A doll with bright red eyes and dark ashy gray hair tied up in a high ponytail. You like the doll's ripped up jeans. Aw, a doll with ripped up jeans, that's so cute! Who is this cute one? A doll with blood red eyes and pale skin. He has big round glasses, and his blonde hair is stylized in a fluffy mohawk. Cute! Any of you fellas and ladies seen a doll? You open the wardrobe. There's nothing in there but clothes. You're about to close it when something catches your eye. Oh! I didn't think I'd find it that easily. Hee <laughs> hee! It's a blue skull. You reach out to touch it. Forgive me for touching your skull, Morpheus. What the? Where am I? You are no longer in Morpheus's bedroom, but instead a new bedroom. It looks... bland. Very different from Morpheus's room. There are no plushies, fancy furniture, nothing. All there is is a sad-looking bed that looks like it's about to fall apart at any moment. Suddenly, the door opens and enters an elderly woman with the most sour face you've ever seen. She somehow looks even more grumpy than hubris. She doesn't even seem to notice that you're here. A little young boy, probably no older than seven, trails behind her. In his arms is a beautiful porcelain doll with raven black hair and dark brown skin. The little boy walks slowly, his head looking down. One of the most striking features about him is his silver-white hair. The little boy. He looks an awful lot like... Morpheus! Morpheus? Morpheus? Kid Morpheus looks up at the old woman. This is this where is you'll where be sleeping sleep from, from now, now on. on. Can't believe I have to take in this filthy child. Hey! The old woman muttered something, but you couldn't make out what she said. Every morning you will wake up at 8 sharp and begin your chores. First you will clean the large carpet in the main room. 
You will then clean the windows upstairs and down, along with the tapestries and draperies. But how am I supposed to... Silence! <laughs> you will then attend the garden, then scrub the terrace, sweep the halls and the stairs. Clean the chimney, and of course there is the mending and the sewing and the laundry. Do I make myself clear? Yes, Grandmother. And that's another thing. You will not call me Grandmother. You will call me Lady Genevieve. I don't want others knowing that I'm related to you. Now go to bed. The old woman exits the room, shutting the door harshly. Oh. On second thought, Morpheus, you don't gotta do, do any chores. You don't gotta do nothing. Just sit here and be cute. Kid Morpheus crawls into bed. The bed makes a loud creaking sound. Sitting down, he holds the doll in his arms like it was a newborn baby. He closes his eyes and begins to cry softly. <gasps> ah, ah. What just happened? Was that a memory you just saw? You look back at the wardrobe. The blue skull is gone. Maybe it's best if you just forget what you saw. Mm -mm. As you were carefully inspecting the area, your eyes notice something shiny on the shelf. It's a shiny black button. Maybe it belongs to Morpheus's missing doll and must have fallen off. You pick up the small, flat, round object. Hey, Morpheus, I found something. Does this look familiar to you? Morpheus snatches the button out of your hands, making you wince. You could have just asked me to hand it to you. I didn't have to snatch it like that. Quiet, human. I'm examining. You bite your tongue to hold back an insult you oh so badly wanted to throw at him. If he was just a regular human, you would have thrown him out of the window by now. <laughs> like a football. <laughs> the blueberry short butt carefully inspects the button in his hand. It was taking quite a while, though. Not sure why, it's just a tiny button. Not much to look at. What is... What is Morpheus's vampire power? He closes his hand with the button and nods. Yes, just as I thought. It's the button I sewed into Elizabeth's dress. It must have fallen off. You made that doll? I made all of these dolls. Each and every doll you see was crafted by my hands. That's... Yeah, that's impressive. That's cool. <laughs> that's really impressive. You really made all these by yourself? Even the Lilith one? I have some questions. Morpheus' eyes widen slightly, a bit taken off guard by your response. That is pretty cool. Do you know how hard it is to make a doll? Like, sometimes I watch those videos where they take a Monster High doll and they clean her up and then give her different hair. That, that takes time. His cheeks turn slightly pink, and he averts his gaze away from you, looking at something else. Oh, Yeah. He stutters a little. You guess he wasn't used to hearing compliments. It was honestly kind of cute. You couldn't help but smirk. You wanted to see what would happen if you kept on complimenting him. You must be extremely talented to make all of these dolls. Honestly, I'm a bit jealous. I wish I could make amazing dolls like you can. I mean, I do. <laughs> Morpheus' face. <laughs> oh, red as a cranberry. Morpheus' face becomes red. He reminded you of a bright red tomato. I, uh, um, thank you. He coughs into his hand, trying to regain his composure. He glares at you. Hey! L look, look. I don't have time for this. I need to find my Elizabeth doll. His expression then softens as he once again averts his gaze away from you, a little bit of a blush still lingering on his face. But thank you for the compliments. You're a little disappointed you couldn't keep going, but it was still fun while it lasted. Aww. Anyways, I must find my Elizabeth. I don't want to even think about what could be happening to her. She could be getting dirty. Or worse. His face grimaces as he pictures his doll in the worst possible scenarios. As long as she as long as Cerberus doesn't get a hold of her, she should be okay. You can kind of understand why he would be so upset. If you lost something of yours that you worked really hard on, you would be very distraught over it too. So any idea where it she So any idea where she 
Might be. The last place I put her was on the shelf. Are you sure you didn't just misplace it? Uh, I mean, her? No, I would have remembered moving her. Well, it's not like she would have gotten up and walked away. Which means the only logical answer is... He suddenly has a sharp glint in his eye. She was stolen. Uh, eh? That's a pretty big jump to make. Um, are you sure? I really don't see any reason why anyone would steal it. I mean her. Are you really sure you didn't just misplace her somewhere and forgot? Like Eros did? I mean, you don't have any evidence that proves your theory. I know for a darn fact that it is true. I would have noticed that she was missing a button and immediately go fix it. Ah, that's a good observation. I wouldn't leave the button on the shelf. Therefore, she was stolen. Mm -mm. Just roll with it, Espoir. The sooner you get this done, the sooner you can get back your freedom. Okay, so your doll was stolen. Any idea who could have done it? Morpheus closes his eyes and ponders, deep in thought. He rubs his chin as his brow creases. Finally, after a few moments, he opens his eyes and holds up three fingers. There are three possible suspects. Eros, Mammon, and Beelzebub. What makes you think it was those three, not Phthonos, Ares, or Hubris? Well, of course not Hubris. Hubris couldn't have done it. He spends all day in his office. Plus, he has no motive. It wouldn't make sense for Ares to take her either. And Phthonos wouldn't take something of mine without asking. But the other three... Ugh. A dark, ominous aura surrounds Morpheus. I know for a fact that one of those idiots is guilty. They always pull these kind of things just to get back at me, or to do a stupid prank on me. But this time they've gone too far. No one steals my precious Elizabeth doll. You're so glad that Morpheus didn't suspect you of stealing the doll. Part of you feels a little bit sorry for the brothers. Just a little bit. <clears throat> You're still sore about the whole getting kidnapped thing. So, what are we gonna do? Simple. We interrogate them. Uh, I feel like we're skipping a few steps. No time. Let's go. Uh he swiftly leaves the room, leaving you behind. You quickly run after him, not wanting to get lost in this maze of a house. The walk to Eros' room is awkwardly quiet. Maybe you should try getting to know this guy, since you're going to be stuck with him all night. It could help you in getting him to like you more. But what should you say to him? You don't know much about this guy, other than he likes dolls. Maybe you could ask him what his favorite book genre is. It's a lame question, sure, but it could help you get to know him a little better. So, uh, do you like reading? Morpheus raises an eyebrow. When I have the time, yes. It helps me relax and unwind, especially when I have a glass of wine and some cheese. Mmm. And sometimes chocolate if I'm in the mood for something sweet. I like your taste, Morpheus. I wonder, do, do you like horror? Morpheus' eyebrows pulled down as he wrinkled his nose. Ugh, no. I hate horror. Wait, seriously? I figured you'd love, like, dark brooding castles and dolls coming to life and that sort of thing. You're honestly surprised. Judging by Morpheus' gothic attire and the fact that his room is full of creepy dolls, you would think this man would love horror. I don't like getting scared. Oh. He avoids your stare, trying to hide his embarrassment. That's okay, Morpheus, neither do I. You have a room full of creepy-looking dolls, and you seem just fine and dandy with them. That's because dolls don't scare me. I find comfort in them. They make me feel happy. And do not call them creepy, you worthless pig. Duly noted. So much for trying to get on good terms with him. Fashion magazines scatter across the princess bed, and a giant picture of Eros hangs on the wall. Gorgeous. Lovely. Because of course he does. <laughs> Though you expected him to have more than one photo of himself. It's also a lot more clean, too. You would imagine there to be clothes scattered across the floor. But surprisingly, it looks pretty decent. 
Don't be surprised if you come out of here covered in glitter. Eros's whole room is covered in it. Of course. Hey, that, that should be a clue. Was there glitter in your room? Hmm. Eros isn't here. We can use this time to find any evidence or clues. Hmm. Good idea. Where should we start looking? Actually, now that I think about it, I think he likes mystery more. I should have chose that. We? Um, yes. We. I'm not going to do anything. You are going to do all of the work. What? Why? I'm too distressed and angry to even focus on searching right now. Can't you see how angry I am? In other words, he's lazy. Oh, yeah. If you want me to help you with your chores, you're going to do the heavy work. This little piece of poo. You resist the urge to kick this man. You wanted to do it so badly. Oh, so very badly. But you know that wouldn't be such a great idea because one, you need his help, and two, this man could easily turn you into ground beef if he wanted to, and you don't really want to die. With a deep breath, you slowly inhale and exhale. Just stay calm, Espoir. You can do it. The sooner you get this done, the sooner you can finally leave and never see any of these a-holes ever again. Oh, but I want to see some of these a-holes. Of course, Eros would have a huge picture of himself. You're not surprised. You thought it would be bigger. It's pretty big. What you reading? Lying on top of Eros's bed are some random fashion magazines. One of them is titled, How to Be Popular, a full-length mirror. You read somewhere that vampires can't see their reflection because mirrors used to be backed with silver. Yeah. The mirrors these guys use must be backed up with aluminum instead. Yeah, that's what I heard. On the thread rack, there are various color threads. But the one that stood out to you was the dark blue thread. On the side of the thread is a symbol of a crown. Hmm. None of the other threads have this. You pick it up and bring it over to Morpheus. Hey, Morpheus, is this yours? Morpheus's eyes widen as he spots the spool of thread. He snatches it out of your hand. Stop doing that! Okay, rude. I was going to give it to you. Where did you find this? You point over to the thread rack. I found it over there. Uh-oh. The dark, menacing aura appears over Morpheus again. So not only did that bastard steal my doll, but he also steals my thread, too? Now, wait a second. We don't know if he took your doll. Just because he has your thread doesn't mean... Vengeance! Stop sounding like me, Morpheus. It's hopeless. This man craves blood, and he won't rest until he smites those who have wronged him. Uh-oh. Eros, run! Eros, get out of here! <laughs> Suddenly, the door swings open, and Eros enters the room. What the heck are you doing in my room? Eros looks annoyed at first. But his expression soon turns into fear when he sees the raging Morpheus standing next to you. Uh, hey, Momo. Eros puts on a forced smile. You can see beads of sweat on his forehead. So, uh, how are things? Cut the bullcrap, you crook! Morpheus jumps onto Eros, grabbing a tight hold of his shirt collar. Confess! Uh, confess what? You know what? Stop playing dumb! Morpheus shakes Eros around. Eros's arms flop around like a rag doll. When Morpheus finally stops shaking him, Eros looks like he was going to throw up. Confess already, and I might go easy on you. Okay, okay, I confess, I'll confess. Just stop shaking me, please. Ha, huh. so you admit that you stole Elizabeth. Yes, I... Wait, what? I didn't take your doll. Mm hmm? What? Eros pushes Morpheus off of him. He wipes down his shirt, trying to get rid of the wrinkles. I didn't take your doll. What I did take was your thread. He points at the spool of thread Morpheus was holding in his hand. I needed some dark blue thread for a new dress I'm working on. I figured since you have so much of it, you wouldn't mind if I borrowed at least one. I didn't take Elizabeth. I have no reason to. What about the other day when I threw a book at you? Mm. Okay. Fair point. So you did take her! No, I didn't! 
When I was in there to borrow your thread, the doll was still sitting on the shelf. How can I be so sure you're telling the truth? I am. By the looks of it, this probably won't ever end. Maybe you should step in. Or maybe not. <laughs> no, no, no. No. Okay. Tell Morpheus that Eros is innocent. As much as I would like to do nothing. Morpheus, I think he's telling the truth. How can you be so sure? Morpheus, I looked all over Eros' room. There's no sign of your doll anywhere. If it was here, I would have found it by now. Oh. See? I told you I didn't steal Elizabeth. Um, sorry. You still stole my thread, though. Yeah, but... You may not have stolen Elizabeth, but you're still a thief. And for that... Morpheus suddenly pulls out a long black cane. Oh no, he's going for his ankles! You have no idea where he was keeping that, and you don't want to know either. You must be punished. C can't we talk it out? No. Uh-uh. <laughs> Eros then bolts it out of the room. Morpheus followed behind him, swatting his cane in the air, trying to hit Eros. Eros! Ah! Well, at least you kind of got them to stop fighting for a while. <clears throat> you quickly follow after Morpheus to make sure he doesn't end up murdering Eros. You really don't want Morpheus to kill Eros. Not because you like the guy or anything, but because it would be a pain in the butt to get the blood out of the carpet. Mm. Not to mention, Hubris probably wouldn't be too pleased with you to let one of his brothers die on your watch. <laughs> Morpheus, no killing. After several minutes of trying to pry Morpheus off of Eros, you finally managed to get him to calm down. Okay, so Eros didn't take her. That leaves Mammon and Beelzebub. Okay, so who are we going to next? Mammon. All right, but he better not try to pull another prank on me like he did yesterday. Calm down. He's not going to do anything to you. Morpheus rolls his eyes. Though, you will need to be careful around his lab. He set up all sorts of traps down there. I'm sorry, what? Traps? He has traps and puzzles all over the mansion. He says it's in case any intruders broke in. Some of them can be quite deadly for a human. What? Why didn't anyone tell me this? How many times have you played this game? You should know that by now. He shrugs his shoulders. I guess we forgot. <laughs> ah! You guys want me to be killed. Why couldn't you have just stayed in your car? Why did you have to come to this place? Come on, human. We don't have all night. You look up to see Morpheus already walking without you. You quickly run up to him. You follow Morpheus, sticking close behind him, as the two of you venture down a spiraling staircase. The room becomes darker and darker with each step you take. You are having trouble seeing what was in front of you. Hey, Morpheus, I can't see anything. Calm down. You'll be fine. But I might trip and fall. You hear Morpheus let out an annoyed sigh. Just put your hand on my shoulder or something. Stick close and you'll be fine. Now stop whining already. Well, at least he was trying to be helpful. You placed your hand on his right shoulder and stay close behind him. You hope you don't accidentally step on his heels. Oh. Now that you're not locked up on an operating table, you can finally get a good look at Mammon's lab. There are various different bottles, each filled with mysterious liquids. One of them looks like it contains blood. Oh, that's nice. There are also jars filled with brains, eyeballs, hands. You don't want to know where Mammon got all this. So, do you know where all the traps are? Nope. What do you mean, no? Mammon forgot where he put them. Hubris told him to write it down so he wouldn't forget, but Mammon was certain he wouldn't forget. Two days later, he completely forgot where all of the traps were. Well, 
how come you never bothered to try and figure out where they are? Because, one, the traps aren't deadly to us monsters. They are more of an annoyance at best. We never thought about any humans breaking in because who would be stupid enough to go into a creepy looking house that's in the middle of a dark forest? Hey. Mm. And two, there are too many traps, and we don't feel like trying to find them all. Great. Fantastic. There are a bunch of traps everywhere, all super deadly, and you have no idea where they could be. Maybe you can use Morpheus as a shield in case any traps were set off. Say, Morpheus? What? This place is giving me the creeps, and I'm a little frightened. Okay, and? I could really use someone really strong to protect me. You give Morpheus your biggest puppy dog eyes. Hmm. Ugh. <laughs> he wrinkles his nose in disgust. Okay, fine, I'll do it. Just stop looking at me like that. It's weird. Ouch, that hurt your ego a bit. But at least you have your human, uh, vampire meat shield with you. I, uh, that dude looks dangerous, so I'm gonna click on this thingy, thingy here. A mysterious yellow liquid sits on the table. Hmm. You reach out and grab it. Why? Do not drink that. I wasn't gonna. I saw you reaching for it. Do not drink that. Uh, you pout as you back away from it. I wasn't gonna drink it. I was just gonna look at it. Well, let me look at the eyes then. Why does Mammon have this? You wish you could cover it up with something because it feels like the eyeballs are staring at you. You're pretty sure one of them just blinked. Eh. <laughs> Hey, dude, what's up? Has this always been here? I don't think so. You're pretty sure you didn't see this yesterday. Must be something new that Mammon had gotten recently. You better stay right there, friend. You open the cabinet to find it filled with jars full of different organs. You quickly close it, not wanting to look at it anymore. Opening the cabinet, you find a box of matches. For some reason, you feel the need to take. You pick up the matches and place them in your pocket. You open the cabinet to find it full of worn-out books. Curious, you take one out and flip through it. It looks like some research notes, but you can't tell what they're for. It appears to be written in some language you don't know. You put the book back in its place. Hmm. Empty, like your soul. <laughs> Opening the cabinet, you find a large bottle of vodka. Alright. Hmm. You're sure Mammon wouldn't mind if you had some. Do not! Don't do that! You pick up the bottle and carefully hit it away. Don't do that. Why is that dude gone? Well, Morpheus, I searched all over the lab. I don't see any sign of the... <clears throat> uh, what's up with you? Morpheus doesn't say anything. Instead, he points behind you. Let me just... Let me just... Let me just save real quick. <clears throat> Confused, you turn around. Oh! The anatomical model is right behind you. What's up? Suddenly, the model shoots its hands out forward, trying to grab you. Morpheus quickly grabs your arm and pulls you out of the way in time. Thank you! The anatomical model steps closer towards you. You and Morpheus run over to the door. Morpheus tries to open it, but it wouldn't budge. Meld, it's not opening. You stay here. I'll fight it off. Morpheus charges at the model. He tries to punch it, but the model catches his hand. It then grabs Morpheus around the neck, choking him. No, short king! The model flings Morpheus to the side like he was nothing but a rag doll. He lands against a wall with a loud thud. He's not getting back up. No, the little prince, no. Morpheus! Morpheus, get up, please! But Morpheus doesn't make any movement. I thought you said this was deadly- Well, I guess being knocked out isn't dead, but how dare you- How dare you attack my short king! The anatomical model sets its sights on you. You need to do something. Quick. Punch it! Dang it. <laughs> or not press the thing in time. That's fine.
The anatomical model grabs you by the throat and squeezes your neck tightly. You claw at the arms, trying to get out of its grasp, but to no avail. Suddenly, you go limp. How dare you? I use the vodka. You quickly open the bottle of vodka and throw the liquid at the model. Oh yeah, I've got some matches. The model is now covered in vodka. <laughs> Science. This. You swiftly take out the box of matches, lighting one up. You toss it at the model. Eh. The model lights up in flames in an instant. The model quickly turns to ashes. Phew. You fall to the ground, trying to catch your breath. Goosebumps cover your entire body from head to toe. It felt like your heart was going to burst out of your chest. That thing must have been one of Mammon's traps. Guess he really doesn't want anyone going through his stuff. You look over to see Morpheus still lying on the floor. I will check to see if he's okay. Baby boy, are you okay? You quickly run over to Morpheus, picking him up in your arms. Morpheus! Morpheus, wake up! Short King! You gently slap his face, trying to wake him up. Morpheus' eyes flutter open. Ugh, my head. Are you okay, Morpheus? Do I look okay? Okay, fair enough. That was a dumb question to ask. Can you stand up? Do you need me to get you something? I'll be fine. Say, what happened to the model that just attacked us? I burnt it. Really? How did you do that? Well, while I was searching, I found some matches and some vodka. Hmm. That's pretty clever, Espoir. Huh? What's this? Morpheus picks up a small metal box he found hidden underneath the table. He opens it and takes out a piece of purple fabric. It looks like it was burnt. This fabric? It's the same fabric I used to make the dress for Elizabeth. He crushes the metal box in his hand. Ooh. Uh, Morpheus, please calm down. Suddenly, the lab door opens. Run! Run, Mammon! Get out of here! Run! It's Mammon. What are you two doing in here? And why do I smell burnt rubber? Morpheus swiftly turns his head around. Murder is written in his eyes. Um. Uh, what's up? Morpheus stomps over to Mammon. Out of all the dolls of mine you could have used for your experiments, you chose Elizabeth? How could you? Huh? What are you talking about? I didn't take Elizabeth. Then how do you explain this? Morpheus shoves the piece of fabric into Mammon's face. I recognize this fabric anywhere. What? Oh. I didn't take that fabric from Elizabeth. I went into your room earlier tonight to borrow some fabric. I'm working on an experiment to make fabric that's strong enough to withstand an explosion. I wanted to ask you first before I took any, but I couldn't find you anywhere. So I just took some from your recycle bin. And I also borrowed this little guy to help me with the sewing. Oh. Mammon pulls out what looks to be a pincushion that's shaped like a hedgehog. It has sewing pins sticking out of its back and is wearing a tiny crown on its head. Oh, it's precious. Sir Needles? It walks towards Morpheus, sniffing the air. Oh, is that his pet? Oh. Wait, that thing is alive? Honestly, you'll take a living pincushion over a murderous anatomical model any day. Sorry about that, Morpheus. I should have left a note or something, but it honestly slipped my mind. Morpheus gently takes Sir Needles into his hands. Is he telling the truth, Sir Needles? He puts Sir Needles up to his ear. He nods and places him on his shoulder. I'm sorry for accusing you of stealing Elizabeth. His face turns slightly pink from embarrassment. Don't worry about it. Mammon casually shrugs as he smiles. I can understand why you would act like that. She means a great deal to you. As for the burnt rubber smell, that was because of me. I had to burn your anatomical model. Huh? Why? Because it tried to choke me. It tried to hurt the Short King. Because it tried to kill us? Why would it do that? Was... was that not a trap of yours? No. What? 
Wait, what? How did it attack us? Hmm. Must have been possessed by a ghost or something. Ghost? This place has ghosts? Does any of them have large chests? Here in an old creepy mansion that's in the middle of nowhere. Of course it has ghosts. Alright, fair point. Guess I was right about it being possessed. I thought I was going crazy from staying up too much. I thought we told you to stop doing that. Hmm. Oh, look at the time. I've got a lot of work to do. You two better get going. I'm telling Hubris. Morpheus? No. Morpheus grabs your hand and pulls you out of the lab. <laughs> so far, this night hasn't been too bad. Not the greatest, sure, but not completely awful. So you may have almost gotten killed by a creepy anatomical model earlier. Not really your ideal way of spending a night out. But you have been able to get to know Morpheus a little better. And you think he's starting to like you. Only a little bit, but it's still progress. This means he'll be more likely to help you with your chores again in the future. Looks like picking him wasn't a bad idea after all, despite what you were saying in the beginning. You follow Morpheus as he enters through an orange door. There's a metal sign hanging on the door with the word KING printed on it. Oh no! You step inside the room. Oh no! Oh no! We're in Beazelbub's room! <laughs> what a classy room! It feels like you just went back in time to the 1950s. And it's also really big. Wow, Beelzebub's bedroom is huge. Well, he is a big guy. For you. What did you expect? <laughs> oh yeah, Beelzebub is like seven feet tall, so it makes sense to give him a really big bedroom. Beelzebub sure does like Elvis Presley. Oh really, what gave it away? Haha, <laughs> very funny. I have to admit it, it is pretty impressive that Beelzebub has managed to get a vintage Elvis Presley poster in such great condition. Yeah, he has a bunch of these. He's a huge fan of this guy. Elvis is the whole reason why Beelzebub learned how to play the guitar. Oh, he knows how to play the guitar! Oh! Huh, so that guitar isn't for show after all. You wonder what kind of music Morpheus likes. Yeah. Well, I highly doubt he likes, uh, 50s rock. That would be so cute if he does like heavy metal. Do you like classical music? I do listen to it from time to time. It's not my favorite, but I do like it. What? You telling me you don't like Frederick Chopin? You don't like Bach? Really? I was sure that classical music would be your favorite. I suppose I could understand why you would think that, considering my attire. I don't listen to it regularly, but every now and then, I will. Some of my favorites are The Four Seasons, Concerto No. 2, Summer 3, Presto by Vivaldi, Requiem, Desire by Mozart, and Night on a Bear Mountain by M Masorgsky. I like to listen to them while I'm reading or trying to relax with some tea. Anyways, enough talking. Time for you to look around. Ooh, 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 to look around Beelzebub's room. An old 1950s jukebox. It looks brand new. Wow, how did Beelzebub get his hands on this? He found it at the dump. That's where he gets most of his stuff. <laughs> he goes to the dump? Why? He says he can find a lot of neat stuff there. His words, not mine. I want to go dumpster diving with Beelzebub. I'm not kidding. What is this? Oh, it's an old 1950s TV. Does this even work? No, he just has it because he thinks it looks cool. The king. The poster showed an image of a young, handsome Elvis Presley. On top of him is in big bold text saying, The King. A trash can filled to the brim with crumpled up paper. Oh, is that the songs he's writing? You pick one up and uncrumple it. It looks like song lyrics. You guess Beelzebub likes to write songs in his free time. Aww. A big orange acoustic guitar is hanging on the wall. It has Beelzebub's initials, BK, printed on the front. Burger King. Oh, Beelzebub's bed? Oh. You look under the bed and you find a big brown shoebox. Curious, you grab it and take it out of the bed. Inside the box you find 
Magazines. Motorcycle magazines, to be exact. Why would Beelzebub hide these away in a shoebox? You open one of the magazines. Mm -mm. Oh, that's why. The pages are filled with scantily dressed women. You feel your cheeks burning up. You open up another one. It was similar to the first, but this one was filled with scantily dressed men. You feel your cheeks burn up even more. You have seen enough and quickly put the magazines back where you found them. What's up with you? N -n nothing just thinking about Beelzebub. Okay. <laughs> Who dis? A pinup poster of an attractive looking vampire lady. Hmm. Hmm. You notice something behind the bottom left corner of the poster. Eh? Oh. Ooh. You peel back the poster to reveal a safe hidden behind it. It looks like you'll have to enter the correct four-letter code to open the safe. The answer to the safe is shown in plain sight. Use uppercase letters only. Oh. <laughs> Let me take a wild... Wild guess. Wild guess. <laughs> Finally, you open the safe to find... Poorly made dolls and a pair of broken glasses. Hmm. What? What is all of this? Morpheus picks one of the dolls up. The doll's left arm quickly falls off. It has lopsided eyes and a poorly stitched on smile. Aww. Its head was way too small and the dress, or at least you think it's a dress, looks like it was stapled together. Aww. Why does Beelzebub keep these ugly looking dolls in his safe? Maybe he's collecting them. That doesn't make any sense. Beelzebub has never shown any interest in dolls before. He's afraid of dolls. He says he finds them to be creepy. Aw, duly noted. So why does he have these? Suddenly, you hear the door open. Oh! <laughs> Sexiness has entered the room! Beelzebub enters, humming a tune to himself. He stops when he spots you and Morpheus. What are you two doing in Beelzebub's room? His eyes land on the doll that Morpheus was holding in his hand. W where did you get that? Mind explaining this, Beelzebub? He holds out the doll to Beelzebub. Beads of sweat pour down Beelzebub's face. He fidgets with his hands. It's, uh, nothing. Nothing for you to worry about. Morpheus squints his eyes, not pleased with Beelzebub's answer. Really? Because this doesn't look like nothing to me. Oh boy, this looks like it's not going to end well. Morpheus, don't kill my future husband, please. What you do, do step in. Don't, don't hurt him, Morpheus. Beelzebub, just answer the question. Beelzebub doesn't have to tell you anything. Beelzebub did nothing wrong. If you didn't do anything wrong, then you shouldn't have any problem telling us then. Beelzebub, stay silent. Just answer the question already, Beelzebub. Okay, okay. Beelzebub will tell you. Beelzebub was trying to make a doll for you. What? Beelzebub knows how much you like dolls, so Beelzebub wanted to make you one. As a way of saying thanks for helping Beelzebub with his songwriting. But Beelzebub isn't really good at sewing. Beelzebub has pricked his fingers many times with the sewing needle. Beelzebub has tried many, many times to make a good doll for you, but they never came out right. So, Beelzebub hid the dolls away because he was ashamed. Beelzebub hangs his head down. You are a sweet baby and perfect husband! Morpheus looks back at the poorly made doll. Guilt was written all over his face. I love it. Beelzebub looks back up. Really? You do? Even though it looks bad? I do. He holds the doll closer to his chest. I think it's great. Thank you, Beelzebub. Beelzebub grins as he puffs up his chest. <laughs> well, of course it's great. It was made by Beelzebub, after all. Morpheus heads over to the safe and takes out the rest of the dolls. Huh? You want all of them? Yes. But why? You took the time to go out of your way to make something for me. 
It doesn't matter how the end result looks. The fact that you wanted to do something nice for me is enough. So, I'll be taking all of them. Oh, uh, okay. Beelzebub smiles. Come along, human. I have a name, you know. It's Dullface. <laughs> Come along, Espoir. Thank you. You're back in Morpheus's room, helping him put up the dolls on the shelf. You have to admit, it was nice of Beelzebub to go out of his way to make something nice for Morpheus, even if the end result doesn't look very good. You were really surprised when you saw Morpheus's reaction to them. It was sweet. You smile at Morpheus. What? Oh, nothing. Just didn't know you were such a huge softy. I... I am not a softy. Mm-hmm, sure. What about that big speech you made for him? Sh shut up! Oh yeah, Photonus. Suddenly, Photonus enters the room. He's looking quite nervous. It looks like he's holding something behind his back. Um, Momo? Morpheus perks his head up and looks over to Photonus. Oh, Photonus. I didn't hear you come in. Mm. Photonus fidgets in place. He's looking at everything but Morpheus. Photonus, is everything all right? Uh, I'm sorry. Suddenly, Photonus is bawling his eyes out as he sobs uncontrollably. I didn't mean for it to happen. It was an accident. Please don't be mad at me. I'll make it up to you, I promise. Whoa, hey, calm down. Take it easy. Just what are you so worked up about? Photonus brings out the thing behind his back. It's a small porcelain doll with long raven black hair and dark brown skin. It's wearing a fancy purple dress. Elizabeth? Morpheus takes the doll from Pothonus. He protectively holds it against his chest like it was a baby. Oh! Why did you have her? I... I didn't intend to take her. You see, I came in here earlier tonight because I needed your help. One of my plushies got torn up by Ragamuffin and I was hoping you could fix it. But when I entered your room, you were nowhere to be found, so I thought I would just wait in your room for a bit until you got back. I decided to look at your dolls to pass the time. As I was inspecting them, I came across Elizabeth. All I did was touch her, and suddenly the button of her dress fell off. I didn't know what to do. I know this doll means a lot to you, and I didn't want you to be upset, so, uh, in a panic, I took Elizabeth. I thought maybe Arrows could fix it, but he was too busy. Nobody else knew how to fix it either, so I tried to do it myself. I used a piece of cloth as practice, but, um, I couldn't get it right. I'm really, really, really sorry, Morpheus. I didn't mean to ruin Elizabeth. Honest. Please forgive me. Hmm. <sighs> it's okay. Huh? What? Elizabeth is still in good condition. She just needs a new button for her dress. It's nothing to get upset about. Wow. You thought for sure that Photonus was going to be a goner. <laughs> So, you don't hate me? I don't hate you. It was an honest mistake. You didn't do it on purpose. So please don't cry anymore. Photonus giggles, his face beaming with joy. Oh. <laughs> well, I have to get going. I'll see you around. Bye, Morpheus. Bye, Espoir. Sweet baby. Photonus turns around and leaves the room, shutting the door behind him. Morpheus gently sets Elizabeth down on the shelf. Well? Well, what? Are we going to clean up the chores or not? Oh, right, the chores. You almost forgot about that. Oh, yes, let's get going. I'm gonna have to put him on my shoulders to reach the high places. The two of you quickly set off to work. After what has felt like hours, you are finally done with tonight's chores. Ah, uh, why did Hubris give you so many chores? Is he trying to slowly kill you or something? Even for a vampire, it was too much. You were too tired to even speak. Everything in your body feels sore. You could barely even walk. Your legs feel like jelly. Anyways, I'm heading off to bed. I'll see you tomorrow night, human. Morpheus lim limps off to his room. Aww. The guy could at least help you to your room. 
Well, at least he's slowly starting to be nice to you. Dragging your body, you manage to get back to your room. You instantly fall asleep once you got into bed. Aww. Well, I kind of figured. I gotta go back and make some different choices. Lilith! Not bad. Looks like you two are a little bit closer to becoming friends. I'm impressed. Morpheus isn't easy to get along with. I'm also surprised. Okay, you have six more nights to go. Good luck. I'm rooting for you. Do you like mystery books? Aww. A tiny smirk appears on Morpheus's face. It's faint, but if you look closely, you can see it. Indeed, murder mysteries are my favorite. His smile grows wider as his eyes gleam with excitement. <laughs> I love to try and figure out who the culprit is along with the main character. I'll often bring out my notepad and write down any new clues I come across. Oh, that's so precious. I even managed to figure out who the killer is before I finished reading the book. His chest puffs up. He seems to be very pleased with himself. Aww. Yeah, murder mysteries are pretty cool. Heck, that's, that's mainly the reason I play Phoenix Wright. You couldn't help but find him to look adorable. Heh, <laughs> cute. <laughs> Suddenly, his demeanor changes. He quickly goes back to his usual scowling self again. His face is bright cherry red. Tch, don't call me cute. A anyways, enough of this. We have more important matters at hand. Whatever you say, short king. Well, he likes classic music. Do you like heavy metal music? <laughs> that would be so cute. <laughs> you honestly meant that as a joke. There's no way Morpheus would like... The short king loves metal music. No, Morpheus, don't become my next favorite character. Yes, I do. It's my favorite music genre. Mm -mm. What? Wait, seriously? Yes. Why do you act so surprised? Well, you don't look like someone who would listen to heavy metal. I suppose that's understandable. I don't look the part, that's for certain. Hey, neither do I. <laughs> but believe it or not, I do enjoy heavy metal. I like to listen to it while I work. It helps keep me concentrated. It's called The Rising Tombstones. It's a working title. I play the drums. Oh! Huh, I guess you really shouldn't judge a book by its cover. Anyways, enough talking. Time for you to look around. Dang. I understand his likes now, but I still didn't get him in that cute butler outfit. I will get you in an adorable but uh, butler outfit. Uh, tell Morpheus to calm down? Morpheus, please, just calm down. I am calm. Yes, because you screaming like a lunatic over a doll definitely shows how calm you are. It's not just a doll. Morpheus stops himself from discussing it any further. He grits his teeth, crossing his arms in anger. Look, I get that that doll is important to you, but throwing accusations at your brothers isn't right either. Just take a deep breath and calm yourself down. Morpheus takes in a deep breath and slowly exhales it. I'm sorry for jumping on you earlier, Eros. It's alright. I'm just glad you didn't try to pluck my eyes out or something. Also, while I was looking through Eros' room earlier, I didn't see the doll anywhere. See? I told you I was innocent. I'm sorry, Eros. You still stole my thread. It was only one, one spool of thread. Doesn't matter. It's still stealing nonetheless. Ugh. Why must you be so stingy? You're paying for that thread. I am not. Are too. Am not. Are too. Am not. Are not. Am too. Are not. Listen here, you blueberry muffin. I am paying back for that thread, and that's final. Great. Glad it's settled. Come along, Espoir. We still have much work left to do. And by we, I mean you. <laughs> you just got bugs bunnied. Great. Uh, wait, what did I just say? <laughs>
Hey, Morpheus, I can't see anything. Hmm. You feel something grab your hand. Oh, ah, hand holding. Calm down, human. It's just me. Jeez, give me a warning next time when you suddenly grab my hand. You gave me a fright. Sorry, it was the only thing I could think of. I know how to navigate this house well, so just keep a hold of my hand and you'll be fine. Morpheus's grip on your hand becomes tighter. You feel your cheeks become warm. Thank you, Morpheus. Morpheus says nothing in response. He just gives you a simple nod. Oh, hand-holding. So far, this night hasn't been too bad. Not the greatest, sure, but not completely awful. So you may have almost gotten killed by a creepy anatomical model earlier. Not really your ideal way of spending a night out. But you've been able to get to know Morpheus a little better. And you think he's starting to like you. Only a little bit. But it's still progress. That means he'll be more likely to help you with your chores again in the future. Plus, he's... Kinda cute. Yeah. You like the way he blushes when he gets all embarrassed. It makes you want to hug him. Looks like picking him wasn't a bad idea after all. Oh. Come along, human. I have a name, you know. Apologies. Come along, Espoir. You smile. Thank you. Oh, we're friends now. Not a softie, huh? Shut up. He averts his eyes away from you. He gently sets Elizabeth down on the table and heads over to the closet. What are you doing? Getting changed so I can help you with your chores. I don't want my favorite outfit getting filthy. You guess that's understandable. Oh, Precious! Oh, so cute! After a few moments, Morpheus steps out of the closet, wearing a cute butler outfit. I mean, he does kind of look like... Yeah, he looks handsome. You look so handsome. Morpheus's eyes widen as his face turns bright red. D don't call me that. You, you can't just suddenly say that to someone. Sorry, but I couldn't help it. I just had to tell you. You should wear stuff like that more often. I, uh, uh... Morpheus looks away from you. Thanks, I guess. He mumbles it so softly that you almost didn't hear it. Let's get to work already. Morpheus grabs your hand and drags you out of his room. <laughs> Aww, precious... After what has felt like hours, the two of you were finally done. You could barely walk anymore. Every muscle in your body feels sore. You try to keep your balance, but it's too hard for you. Your legs feel like they're made out of jelly. You keep wobbling all over the place. Mm -mm. However, before your body can hit the floor, someone catches you. Morpheus gently holds you in his arms, as if you were made out of glass. Are you alright? Y yeah just really tired. Has Morpheus always been this attractive? Not that you ever thought he was bad looking before, but now seeing him up close, he looks really good. Oh, wait, what were you thinking? Pull yourself together, Espoir. Don't think such things about him. You've only known him for like a day. Usually you do it much quicker. Wait, are you moving? You break out of your thoughts to see that you are in fact moving. Morpheus is carrying you, bridal style. Huh? Where are you taking me? Your room. Where else? You can hardly even stand, so I'm carrying you. Uh, oh, thank you. You feel your face heat up. It feels weird for Morpheus to be doing this, but it also feels... good. Oh. He opens the door to your bedroom and takes you inside. He carefully lays you down on the soft bed. You were so exhausted from cleaning all night that you instantly fell asleep. Oh. What if what if I do say he looks like a doll? <laughs> oh, you look like a doll. He kind of does. Oh. Morpheus's expression breaks. His face turns bright cherry red. I um don't call me that. 
He tries to look serious, but is having difficulty doing so. You didn't think it was possible, but somehow his face becomes even redder. But it's true. You look like a cute porcelain doll. I'm gonna take you home and put you on my mantle. Sh- Shut up! He whimpers. Aww. He looks away from you, crossing his arms. Anyways, let's get to cleaning already. He grabs your hand and drags you out of his room. Oh. You were so exhausted from cleaning all night that you instantly fell asleep. But for some odd reason, it feels like something or someone is watching you. Yay, I got the Yandere ending. Wait, oh no! Well, don't take this the wrong way, but... When Morpheus starts to like someone, like, really like them, he might get a little too attached to you. Huh? What does she mean by that? Just be careful of what words you say around him, okay? Um, okay. Actually, now that I think about it, Morpheus would probably be the worst character to get his Yandere ending with, because you would probably end up being a doll in his room.